If the intellect decides that the best kind of pleasure in the world is to have an ice cream on a hot summer day, then the mind desires ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. There is one person who's spending all the time watching matches, who is moving ahead, Los Angeles Lakers or the Boston Celtics, etc. Somebody is always running money, 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 money. That is all what it is all about. So how do you become detached? How do you detach the mind from the world? Shri Krishna says, I am going to teach you how to control the mind. Bhagavad Gita Sloka Chanting is followed by translation and commentary by Swami Mukundananda. Eshate Bihita Sankhye Bodhir Yoge Dvimam Shrunu Buddhya Yukto Yaya Partha Karma Bandham Prahasyasi Hitherto, I have explained to you Sankhya Yoga or analytical knowledge regarding the nature of the soul. Now listen, O Parth, as I reveal Buddhi Yoga or Yoga of the Intellect. When you work with such understanding, you will be freed from the bondage of karma. So he says, Arjun, I was explaining to you through Sankhya, telling you that you cannot kill anybody, doesn't matter really. But now what I am going to tell you is Buddhi Yoga. What is Buddhi Yoga? This is the Yoga of the Intellect. Now see, you people have heard of Karma Yoga, you've heard of Gyan Yoga, you've heard of Bhakti Yoga, you've heard of Ashtang Yoga and Kriya Yoga. But the word that Sri Krishna uses more than any others is Buddhi Yoga. Arjun, I am telling you the yoga of the intellect. What is the significance of this word buddhi yoga? See, this intellect has a very important place in our personality. There is one person who is spending all the time watching matches who is moving ahead the Miami Heat or the Los Angeles Lakers or the Boston Celtics etc that is all what it is all about and that is his his personality has got molded like that you know why because his intellect is telling him it's very important that the Miami Heat win and somebody else is indifferent why? Because it says, how does it matter whether the Miami Heat win or anybody else wins? It's not relevant to my life. So our intellect fashions our desires. Somebody is always running money, 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 money. Why is that person running in this manner? Because that person's intellect has got this knowledge in it that the real thing that counts in the world ultimately it's money nothing else money makes the mayor go so that is why whatever you do chamdi jaye lekin damdi na jaye sacrifice anything but don't sacrifice money some or the other accumulate it so why is that person running in that direction because that person's intellect has decided now, another person is running madly towards God. What has happened to him that he's running madly towards God? That person's intellect is saying that the happiness I am seeking is in God. Now, people, they come and ask me. 
that Swamiji, what happened to you? Why did you suddenly start going towards God? Was there some tragedy in your life? Did some girlfriend ditch you? Or did you not get a job? Or what was it? Your health got spoiled? What really happened to me? And the conclusion is that the intellect decided that I am a tiny part of God and my goal in life is to realize God. Now that knowledge can have different kinds of depths. You know, knowledge can be very shallow, it can be deeper, it can be deeper and can be deeper. Like the example of deep knowledge. You are about to eat the prasad after the pravachan. And I come and say, don't dare do it. Do you know there was some poison mixed in it? Now you will not touch it. You have this deep conviction, no risks. So that is deep knowledge. So if knowledge is shallow, then we don't act upon it. And if we develop faith in that knowledge, then it naturally becomes practical. So, this intellect is like a vessel. You see, all that you hear, all that you read, all that keeps coming in the intellect. You heard Swamiji? Okay, it's gone in the intellect. You read some book and you heard some other lectures and some read some other inspirational stuff and uninspirational stuff. All that is going into this vessel of the intellect. Now, as the soul, you have the free will, the choice. Which of these pieces of knowledge you wish to activate? That is the choice of the soul. You activate that knowledge that you heard from the Bhagavad Gita and your intellect gets empowered with that knowledge and you start moving in that direction. So, this intellect is so important. It is the biggest thing that impacts our personality. The reason why our mind is attached to the world is because the intellect is telling us happiness is in the world. So that is why we hear the whole lecture. After hearing it, we say, you know, that is all right, but I have to become a millionaire. Now the whole lecture has gone waste. You heard the whole lecture and you applied one but. The whole lecture is, is no use. So why was that but? Because the intellect says, you know, Swamiji may so say so, but really happiness is not in God, happiness is in the world. So this intellect is making the mind attached to the world. In other words, there is the mind and the intellect. The mind is creating desires. And the intellect is making the decisions. So the intellect decides and the mind desires. Usually the mind desires in accordance with the decision of the intellect. If the intellect decides that the best kind of pleasure in the world is to have an ice cream on a hot summer day, then the mind desires ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. And the intellect decides that no, you know, nowadays cholesterol is a big thing and the fat content in ice creams is too much and you're already 50 years old and you should watch your cholesterol or you'll have heart problems. Now the intellect has decided. The mind may desire but the intellect will control it. So then a fight ensues between the mind and the intellect. And if the intellect is strongly believing in that knowledge, it immediately controls the mind. Throughout the day, you are controlling your mind with your intellect. Right now, you are sitting here, you are not realizing it. But your mind is under your control. Like the way you are sitting, is this your natural position? Is this the most comfortable position to you? 
and the swimming see my most comfortable position is when i am at home on the sofa with my legs up there on the chair and sipping the coffee and watching the television so why don't you lift your legs up on the next chair out here you know my intellect rebels it says no that's not the way to do it out here what will people say it will look bad swami ji may not like it others may not like it now the intellect says that the mind is under control and what the mind wants at home you go and see the natural position so all day long you are controlling your mind you go into the office even greater control how are you fine thank you how are you fine thank you what's going on are you actually interested in knowing how he is is just our etiquette the intellect tells us this is proper behavior so the mind engages in that kind of action so we have this internal mechanism that is the senses the mind and the intellect now in the case of animals god has not given their not empowered their intellect with the ability to control the mind so in the case of animals it is the mind which dominates this is the pleasure source that is the survival instinct the intellect will not say you know actually i wish to take this kind of green grass but as a matter of austerity i will take brown grass today the animals the intellect will never do that kind for spiritual progress let me do ekadashi fast today in the human case god has given this power of discrimination your ability to exercise your discrimination through the intellect and god expects you to use it to lead a human like life and if we stop using that discrimination then we fall to the level of animals hence the veda say pashwa tatva vismaranat bhikivat the moment human beings forget that knowledge in the intellect they become like animals in other words a part of the human experience is to utilize the vivek or the discrimination of the intellect and to keep empowering the intellect with powerful knowledge that is why the importance of going to satsangs reading the scriptures hearing from the saints it enhances our ability to discriminate our faith in the right kind of knowledge it enlightens our intellect in various ways there are so many prayers in the scriptures yo brahmanam vidadhati purvam yo vai vedanscha prahinoti tasmai tagvam ha devam atma buddhi prakasham mumukshur vai sharanam aham prapadye this is from the shweta ashvatar upanishad that supreme lord who is illuminating the three worlds who illumined the vedic knowledge in the heart of brahma and who is the object of the knowledge of the vedas i am surrendering to him may he illumine my intellect with proper knowledge now that is a very perfect kind of prayer because if god improves our intellect not the iq improves the quality of our intellect the quality of our life will automatically improve so shri krishna says arjun i am going to go about teaching you buddhi yoga the yoga of the intellect why because he has just told him that be a karma yogi work without attachment so how do you become detached how do you detach the mind from the world the mind will not detach itself you will have to use the intellect 
says you will need to exercise the intellect to practice detachment you see the moment the intellect decides the mind becomes detached so that is why shri krishna is calling this buddhi yoga 